there's been a lot of chatter about cell phones in the classrooms recently on the news. Here are three simple ways we can get started to use cell phones in meaningful ways for student learning. We know in our busy schedules that we need quick and easy strategies that we can use tomorrow. So we hope the next three are quick tools we can implement into our classroom to really maximize those devices and student learning. Research is one of the easiest ways to get started with a cell phone. We've all done it. You go look for a new restaurant, so you pull out your phone. Uh, you watch that YouTube video to help you fix your dishwasher. Maybe that's just me. Uh, but we always access the variety of different media on our devices to help us learn. So why not maximize the device in the classroom that way? Now many times we want to direct students to some resources to explore, so QR codes, those funky little squares, um, or bit.ly are great ways to streamline that process for students. So in addition to bit.ly's and QR codes, we can use apps like Google Classroom, um, especially with the app, uh, students are always logged in and have quick access to that classroom conversation. Or another option is things like uh, adding websites like the library e-resources to their home screen. So both Android and Apple devices let you create a shortcut that looks like a fake app right on your screen to make that access quick and simple. Another way we can use cell phones is to really check for understanding as we're going along with our lessons. And there's so many great ways that we can do that quick check-in in a fun way, but also we get that immediate feedback that we can use to then inform our practice. Whether it's seeing what students are already familiar with um, or what they've explored with polling tools like a hoot or a quiz or a Mentimeter or Socrative. Better yet, have students create their own activities, whether it's a Google form or it's some, a tool like Tiny Cards. One of the biggest benefits of a cell phone is that it, it's a walking multimedia device with a camera and an audio processor. One of the best parts of a cell phone is that it comes with a portable camera that we can use in so many ways. So why not tap into that interest our learners have with Instagram and Snapchat and many other visual social media platforms and use it to capture some learning in class. Maybe it's through something like a book snap where students reflect on something they're reading and use the emojis and stickers and filters to add a metacognitive layer on top of it. Maybe it's documenting a learning process with something like Instagram Stories or even an app like Flippergram. So as your as students are going through the learning process, maybe it's an inquiry project, they have a focus and are taking those pictures and that documentation to create one final story. If you're up for a challenge, there's a great challenge uh, by languages about documenting blue for a day. One of my favorite tools right now is Flipgrid. I've I've loved Flipgrid for several years now, but there's a free option um, to get you started. Flipgrid allows you to create video responses uh, to questions and prompts. So whether they show their faces or not, whether they just hold up the book, uh, explain their math solution, or share what they've learned in guitar class. Lots of ways of capturing that thinking and that learning. So how will you get started with cell phones in the classroom? Share your ideas with the community on Peel 21st. See you there.